what is a must visit place in the PH for people and even for foreigners mm. that are interested in the Philippines history? For me, the most uh, interesting, well, I, I'm partial to, to historical sites. Now, I mean, of course, there's the National Museum, etc. No, but uh, those are givens. They're already in the, they're already on trip advisor. But uh, there are two places that I always like visiting. You know, one is the Aguinaldo House in Kawi, you know, because it's, mm, it's a yeah. beautiful house. You no, know? uh, it has secret passageways, you know, which gives you an idea of what kind of a person he was. You know, he he had a secret passageway on top of his daughter's rooms with peepholes, which I find very uh, disturbing. You no, know? but. Again, it's that. No? It shows you a, a life, you know, which is important. The second one I'd like people to visit is Rizal's um, property in Dapitan. You know? This is some Buanga del Norte. You fly to Dipolog and then it's 13 minutes by car to the place. Uh, there's a beach resort there, so you can go for beach, but spend half a day in Rizal's property. You know? Because when you see this, uh, of course, everything's rebuilt. But it shows you, because we always think Rizal is this guy who wrote two novels, which nobody read and he got shot for it. No? That's the big irony. But the thing here is in the Pitan, the Pitan was Rizal's lab. In it, he did everything that he thought a person could do. He established a water system. He opened a school. He did medical practice. I mean, he bought this property because he won in Lotto. I mean, he was a great Lotto believer he bought a lot of ticket every week you know? um and the okay. irony is when he was an exile in the pita he wins the second prize lot <laughs> so he buys he buys this 30 hectare lot people don't know that the results actual degree after the ateneo he took a degree in land surveying he was a licensed land surveyor wow. so he knew how how to choose land so he chose this beachfront property with with a forest in the back no and when you go there that's when you will realize what he really is and that's the side of Rizal that most people do not see Rizal's greatness is not being shot in Luneta Rizal is actually that man four years in exile in the Pita you can be thrown in exile and you can be depressed and do nothing but what did this guy do he did more for this town than he ever did even for Kalamba no, so he taught people how to 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 have bread. Uh, he he. I mean, I have the let. I read the letter of Rizal. Parang uh, he wrote to his sisters. Alam mo, ito mga tao dito sa Dapita, They live by the sea, but they don't know how to fish. They're so stupid. So <laughs> can you send me a fish net so I will teach them how to fish? So the sisters sent him a fish net, and then a month later, the next letter is. I don't know how to use a fishnet. Can you send? <laughs> can you send a fisherman to teach them? But can you imagine? He saw the opportunity of living by the sea, and then the people didn't know how to how to use it. No, and then uh, I'm sorry, this is getting long, but just to finish, there's this wonderful letter. Rizal sisters sent their sons to the Pitan to be educated by Rizal. He taught there, diba? And one sister was very upset because she had two sons. And then Rizal, she found out that Rizal gave one son a bolo and the other son, she gave, bo he gave a book. So sabi niya, what, ka, what are you doing to my sons? But not you give a bolo yung isa? And then Rizal's reply was, I, it's so wonderful. He says, you know, I've been observing your sons and I know what they are good at. One of your sons likes working in the field. So I gave him a bolo. The other guy likes to read. So I gave him a book. He's always in the shade reading. You should know what kids are good at, what they like, and you, you build from their strengths. You don't force them to be what they don't want to be. And then he wrote to his sister, we cannot all become doctors or lawyers. I have studied so much and I'm here and I'm planting coconuts. No, so, I mean, it's, it shows you a side of Rizal that's really amazing. No? So he had an abaca factory. He had a fruit orchard. Uh, so he, I mean, it's that he, he had, a, he opened a store, a sari-sari store to compete with the Chinese guy, although he was part 
partly Chinese. He was very anti-Chinese. Parang, huwag tayo bibili sa inchi. Kailangan sa Pilipino ka bumili. And he was telling his sisters, kahit mabasag na lahat ng plato ko dito, hindi ako bibili sa inchi. Kailangan sa, sa Pilipino ka. So he opened the store. And that's the funny part. The Pitan is the place where you will see mm-hmm. what a Pinoy can do to make life better. Not just for himself, but for for other people. No? Ah, And also it's that, no? I mean, they were not an ordinary family. I'm, I'm so impressed. The, the person we, we do not know about is his kuya, Masiano, who was the guy who sent him to school. No, we think he's just a farmer. But when you read his letters to his brother, I mean, he was saying like, oh, I'm going to harvest my sugar in Los Baños. And then he says, I was looking at the New York stock prices for sugar. Uh, and it's uh, how will the New York stock prices for sugar affect my yield in Los Baños next month? And I said, this is 1880. This is a farmer in Los Baños. And he's talking about New York sugar prices. This is not an ordinary family, di ba? Will, will a farmer today bother with uh, international prices for their yield? It's, it's really amazing you know, what, what they are. But again, fortunately, that's not in your textbook. So, Tara, let's, morning, let's go. <laughs> I will. I will definitely. It's, it's easy and it, it, well, it has everything, diba? Sun and sea, good for a weekend, 